when you talk, your voice will hit these concrete walls around you, reverberate back, and create an echo that we know as the center of the universe. If you ever visit downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma, you might come across this inconspicuous spot marked by a small concrete circle in the middle of a larger circle of bricks. It might not look like much, but that spot right there is an anomaly that the friendly locals have dubbed the center of the universe. If you stand in the middle of the circle and make a noise, the sound is echoed back several times louder than it was made. It's an incredible effect. There is yet to be an explanation for the phenomenon, but this certainly isn't actually the center of the universe, as some might call it. Or is it? Do we even know where the center of the universe is? Does it even exist? Ever since written records existed, people have suggested a wide variety of locations as the center of the universe. Many of them have revolved around mythological cosmologies that talk about a line or stem through the Earth's center, connecting its surface to the underworld and the heavens, and around which the universe revolves, which we've come to know as Axis Mundi. Others have spoken about the central axis of a flat Earth that connects the Earth, heavens, and other realms together. Dating back to 4th century BC Greece, philosophers discovered a geocentric model based on astronomical observation that suggested the center of the universe lies at the center of a spherical stationary Earth around which the Sun, Moon, planets, and stars rotate. Eventually, with the development of the heliocentric model by Nicholas Copernicus in the 16th century, the Sun was believed to be the center of the universe, with the planets including Earth and stars orbiting it. Even up to the early 20th century, the discovery of other galaxies and the development of the Big Bang Theory led to the development of cosmological models of a homogeneous isotropic universe. But the central point has always been excluded. So where is the center of the universe? The quick answer to that is, the universe has no center. But that isn't the answer we're looking for. Ever since the Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago, the universe has been perpetually expanding. But despite its name, the Big Bang, there wasn't an explosion that burst outward from a central point of detonation. The universe started out extremely compact and tiny. Scientists hypothesized that every point in the universe expanded equally, and that same expansion continues today at a rate of 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And well, without any known point of origin, the universe has no center. We could just give up and leave it be, but that's not how curiosity works. An alternate way of thinking about this is to imagine a two-dimensional bug that lives on the surface of a perfectly spherical balloon. From the ant's point of view, everywhere on the surface looks the same. There is no center on the sphere's surface, nor is there an edge. If you inflate the balloon, the bug will see its two-dimensional universe expand. Draw dots on the surface and they will move away from one another just like the galaxies in our real universe do. For the bug in this two-dimensional universe, any third dimension that expands perpendicular to the balloon's surface, like traveling into the center of the balloon, doesn't physically affect the bug. Barbara Ryden, an astrophysicist at The Ohio State University, said, It knows it can go forward and backward, it can go left and right, but it has no concept of up and down. If you already didn't know, unlike this bug's universe, our universe is three-dimensional. The balloon example that we just gave you, which is limited to surface area, represents a finite universe that we know of, which cosmologists still aren't sure is true of our own. Limited by how far light has traveled since the Big Bang, scientists' observations offer only a limited glimpse of the universe. But that doesn't mean the universe is unlimited. I mean, it could be, but it's just that we can't see the whole thing yet. If it is finite, then you can replace the balloon with a flat, expanding sheet that extends forever. If you're feeling adventurous and you want to think of a 3D universe, then imagine an infinite loaf of garlic bread that's continuously expanding. 
The specks of garlic in this case represent the galaxies flying away from one another. Ryden simply justifies this by saying, if the universe is infinite, there is no center. Although we do not know if the universe is flat or curved, we can hypothesize what it could be like if it were either of those two. This depends on a lot of factors, but in short, it mostly depends on the total amount of mass and energy in the universe. If the mass and energy density of the universe is just right, or in other words, at critical density, then the universe would be flat like a sheet, expanding at a steadily accelerating rate. On the flip side though, if the density is higher, then the cosmos would be curved like a balloon. The extra gravity from this increased density would slow cosmic expansion, eventually bringing that growth to a halt. There is another point of view. At less than this critical density, cosmic expansion would accelerate even more. In this scenario, the universe would have negative curvature with a shape somewhat like a saddle or even like a Pringle chip. It would still be infinite, meaning it wouldn't have a center. So far, theoretical ideas and observations like those of the cosmic microwave background radiation and the afterglow from the Big Bang have given us a point of view that paints a picture of a remarkably flat universe. Even with that information, cosmologists still aren't sure if the universe is indeed flat or if the curvature is so wide that the universe only appears flat. Kind of like how Earth feels flat on the surface. Flat Earthers, please don't get any ideas. This horizon problem is actually quite simple. Let me just give a simple example. When you're a ship at sea and you look out, your horizon in every direction is the same distance from you. So your horizon is a perfect circle centered on you. Or you can imagine, suppose I'm in another spot. Well, that horizon is still true for whoever happens to be in the middle of it, but now you've moved to a new place. You can conclude that is the extent of the entire Earth. The idea that no place in the universe is special is a consistent cosmological principle. The universe has no center and by extension, no edge. Observations of how galaxy clusters are distributed and the cosmic microwave background reveal a cosmos that, when you zoom out far enough, does indeed mostly look the same everywhere. Throughout history, humans have wrongly thought we were at or near the center of the universe, whether that center was the Earth, the Sun, or even the Milky Way galaxy. Even though we humans think we're special, the reality is that we really aren't, as the universe has so far shown us. In whichever direction you ponder into space using a telescope, you'll end up realizing that the universe appears pretty much the same. The number of galaxies, the types of galaxies that are present, the populations of stars that exist within them, the densities of normal matter and dark matter, and even the temperature of the radiation that we see are all uniform, irrespective of the way we look at it. The universe is centered on us in the sense that the amount of time that's passed since the Big Bang and the distances that we can observe out to are finite. But that doesn't really answer the question, is the universe infinite? The part of the universe we can access is likely only a tiny speck of what's out there. The universe could be huge, it could loop back on itself, or it could be infinite. We have no idea. But what we are certain of is that the universe is expanding, the radiation traveling through it is getting stretched to longer wavelengths, it's getting less dense, and the more distant objects appear as they were in the past. It's been an age-old question, where is the center of the universe? But the actual answer is, there is no center, which in itself is the most profound conclusion of all. In light of what we've understood, how could we know where the center of the universe is if we didn't know if the universe was finite or infinite? And how could we calculate the center of something of which we're still uncertain of its shape? Only time will tell. It is this gap in the center of the universe that defies all logic. So, what philosophy do you have about the center of the universe? And do you really think it exists? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.